Section 11.9, Representations of Functions as Power Series. So we want to try to write power series for a few different functions. Remember that we already saw one where we had 1 over 1 minus x, and we said that that was equal to 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, and so on because that was just the uh, geometric series uh, x to the n. And we said that this converged as long as absolute value of x was less than 1. So we did that in uh, section 11.2, I think it was example 7. So how about we start off using this geometric series we have with a equals 1 with some 1 over 1 minus x, and we adapt it for a few similar series. So for example, 1 over 1 plus x squared. We could write 1 over 1 plus x squared as 1 over 1 minus, minus x squared. And that's just the sum of minus x squared to the n. So it's the same series as before, except that we plug in minus x squared. So we can separate out the minus 1. And just write x to the 2n. So this is really just the series 1 minus x squared plus x to the 4th minus x to the 6th plus x to the eighth, and so on. Notice that um, the original series, when we had a minus x, did not alternate. But when we threw in a plus x squared instead, that really made the uh, variable that we're thinking of a negative. So now the series alternates. So this thing is geometric. which means that our sum converges. When the absolute value of minus x squared is less than 1. It's pretty much the same series as before. We just did a substitution for the variable. So that means if the original one converged when absolute value of x would be less than 1, the new one converges when minus x squared is less than 1. So that's the same thing as x squared being less than 1, we can get rid of the absolute value by just getting rid of the negative. But having x squared less than 1 is the same as the absolute value of x being less than 1. So this then converges under the same criteria as before. So that means that our interval of convergence is just minus 1 to 1 because our radius of convergence is 1. How about a power series representation for 1 over x plus 2? So I want to write this in the same form as uh, 1 over 1 minus x in order to use it. So I'll write 1 over 2 plus x to have the x after the 2. And then I will factor out the 2. So I get 1 plus x over 2. Because now this is the same as 1 over 2 times 1 minus, minus x over 2. So I could take out the half. And then this is literally just the series that we had before, but with a minus x over 2 instead of an x. So that's the same as the series with a minus 1 to the n, because I can pull out the minus. And instead of 2 to the n, which is what I have over here, 
I could throw in this two back inside the series to have it all together. So I'll do two to the n plus one, and I'll keep my x to the n. So since this series over here is geometric, we know that this thing converges. So we could say that, as in the previous example, our sum will converge when the absolute value of minus 6 over 2 is less than 1, which is the same as saying that the absolute value of x is less than 2. I just multiply both sides by 2, and taking the minus inside of the absolute value makes no difference. I can just pull it out. So that means that our interval of convergence is minus 2 to 2, because our radius of convergence is 2. How about x cubed over x plus 2? Well, we'll write x cubed over x plus 2 as x cubed times 1 over x plus 2. Because we know we could probably find a series for 1 over x plus 2 because 1 over x plus 2 was just this guy. So this is going to be x cubed times the series that we just got, which was minus 1 to the n over 2 to the n plus 1 times x to the n. And that's the same as the series minus 1 to the n over 2 to the n plus 1, x to the n plus 3. Because what I can do is take this x cubed and throw it back inside of my sum, because right now it's essentially a constant. Notice that it does not depend on n, and the series is over n. So I can write this as half x cubed minus 1 fourth x to the fourth plus one eighth x to the fifth minus one sixteenth x to the sixth and so on. And if I wanted to get rid of this plus three then I could rewrite the series starting at three instead. So this is the same as the series starting at three but going to infinity of minus 1 to the n minus 1. Because I'm starting at 3, I have to go um, back 3, but it doesn't really make a difference between n minus 1 and n minus 3. So I might as well just put the uh, n minus 1, at least for the minus 1 term. For the denominator, I do have to go back 3 because it makes a difference for the 2. So I'll write n minus 2 for that one. And then x gets put back 3, so that's just x to the n. So this means that our interval of convergence is the same as it was before, because all we did was multiply by a constant. Even though x is not you know, typically thought of as a constant in terms of our series, it is. So this is just the same as before, minus 2 to 2. So if the power series x minus a to the n times cn has radius of convergence r, then the function defined by the power series is differentiable and therefore continuous on the interval from a minus r to a plus r. So what we can do is actually term by term differentiation. So when you di differentiate the constant c naught, it disappears. Then c1 times x just gives you c1. 
2 times c2 times x becomes the next term. Notice that this minus a disappears because c1 times a is just a constant, so it has no place over here. You only get the constant next to the variable. Whereas in the second term, you have to use the chain rule. So we differentiate term by term, and we end up with this. So that means that you can look at your series and just do the uh, chain rule. Take n, put it out in front. That's where this comes in. And reduce the power by 1, multiply by the derivative, which is just 1. Notice that now you start at 1 instead of starting at 0 because you lost your constant term over there. So you have to be a little bit careful because even though we were able to do this for power series, this is not necessarily true in general for all types of series. You cannot necessarily just differentiate the a n term and then, you know, leave it at that. But it works for power series, so we'll just kind of take it for granted. Similarly, you can integrate a function defined as a power series by integrating each of the terms. So the constant term adopts an x minus a. All the other terms go up a power and divide by whatever power you want up and you get an extra plus c. So you can think of that as x minus a to the n became x minus a to the n plus 1, and then you just divide it by your new power n plus 1. And then the cool thing is that differentiating or integrating does not change the radius of convergence of the power series. Your interval of convergence can change, but your radius of convergence will be the same. Let's find the derivative of the Bessel function. So we want j0 prime. Well, as our theorem says, that's just the derivative of a n inside of the series. So we'll differentiate minus 1 to the n times x to the 2n over 2 to the 2n times n factorial squared. Now the cool thing is that even though x is a constant in terms of the series, x is not a constant in terms of the derivative we're taking with respect to x, but now n is a constant in terms of the derivative. So we don't have to worry about any of the n terms, we only have to worry about the x terms. So using the power rule, we go up one for where our series starts when we take our derivative. We end up with minus 1 to the n, because it's just a constant, so we keep it. x to the 2n becomes 2n times x to the 2n minus 1. We just decrease the power. And the rest of it is just constant, so it all stays. So it looks a lot worse than it is. How about the function 1 over 1 minus x and then squared? What is this radius of convergence? Well, first we have to figure out what this thing's power series is. So let's look at 1 over 1 minus x again. So that was 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so on. Which is just the sum of x to the n. So notice that if you take the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x, then this is 1 minus x to the minus 1. So the minus 1 hops out in front and then becomes a minus 2. So we get 1 minus x squared in the denominator. But then we multiply by the derivative using the chain rule. So the 2 minuses cancel. So we literally just get 1 over 1 minus x squared. So that means that we can differentiate the right side also. Differentiating this is 0, but then differentiating this is 1. So we'll still start at 1, but now we'll have 2x for the second term. So we have 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared, and so on, differentiating term by term. So that's just the sum from 1 to infinity of this thing with the power rule. So the n hops out in front, 
you get x to the n minus 1. So that's just the sum of n plus 1 times x to the n. We just swap n plus 1 in for n, and then we start one earlier. OK, so the radius of convergence must be 1, because we have our theorem that says that differentiating doesn't change the radius of convergence for power series. How about a power series for ln of 1 plus x? Well, again, let's write out what 1 plus x is in terms of 1 minus x. So that would be 1 over 1 minus, minus x. So that's 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed and so on where the series converges for absolute value of x less than 1. So notice that ln of 1 plus x has derivative 1 over 1 plus x. So that means that ln of 1 plus x is equal to the antiderivative, or the indefinite integral, of 1 over 1 plus x dx. So that's just the integral of 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed, and so on. So we can integrate term by term. Integrating 1 gives us x. Then we get minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 4, and so on. And of course, we have to add a plus c now. So this is just the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n minus 1 x to the n over n plus c. Notice that we're starting at 1 because starting at 0 wouldn't really do anything over here. We just have x to the 0, which is one and there is no constant term over here at the beginning. We're starting at x, so we'll start at 1. And this then converges for absolute value of x less than 1. So we would like to know what c is, though, because we don't want to write our series with a c in it. So let's use the fact that ln of 1 plus 0 would have to equal c because if 0 is in here, all of these guys disappear when you plug in 0 for x. So this thing must equal c, but ln of 1 is 0, so that means that c must equal 0. Oh, so we never really had a c. So we could now say that ln of 1 plus x is equal to x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 uh, minus x cubed x to the fourth over 4 and so on. And that's just the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n minus 1 x to the n over n where absolute value of x is less than 1. So our radius of convergence is 1. So that's kind of an important formula. Now we have a power series representation for the natural logarithm. How about arctangent of x? Remember that the derivative of arctangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So that means that we can write arctangent as the indefinite integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. So that's just the integral of 1 minus x squared plus x to the fourth minus x to the sixth and so on because we did 1 over 1 plus x squared as our first example. So integrating term by term we get our constant plus x 
minus x cubed over 3 minus x to the fifth over 5 minus or plus x to the fifth over 5 I'm supposed to be alternating here and then minus x to the seventh over 7 and so on so it would be nice to know what this constant c is like before so we'll plug in 0 because then all these terms disappear and we just get that the tan inverse of 0 must be equal to our constant but tangent inverse of 0 is 0 so that means our constant equals 0 so that means that we have a formula now for tan inverse of x in terms of power series it's x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 5 minus x to the seventh over 7 and maybe I shouldn't keep rewriting it because every time I rewrite it I have another chance to make a mistake but that's okay we have in series sigma notation we have minus 1 to the n because it's alternating and we're starting at 0 because we're going to write odd powers for our series and usually we write odd powers for writing 2n plus 1 it's an easy way of writing an odd number so we'll divide by 2n plus 1 also because an even number is just 2n and then you add 1 you get odd our radius of convergence is the same as before we integrated so it's just 1 how about 1 over 1 plus x is 7 and then we integrate see if we can do that as a power series. So we'll start with 1 over 1 plus x to the 7th and we'll rewrite that in terms of 1 over 1 minus x so that's 1 over 1 minus minus x to the 7th so that's just let's see if I can do a sum And that's going to be of minus x to the seventh to the n. So the same series just replaced with minus x to the seventh. And that's the sum of minus 1 to the n, I'll pull up the minus, times x to the 7n. So we could write this series as 1 minus x to the seventh plus x to the 14th and so on. So that means that our integral becomes 1 over 1 plus x to the seventh dx the integral of this series starting at 0 for minus 1 to the n x to the 7n dx and that's just going to be our constant plus the antiderivative of our arbitrary term a n inside the series so we keep our minus 1 to the n because it's constant and then x to the 7n becomes x to the 7n plus 1 increase the power by 1 divide by the new power 7n plus 1 so we could write that as c plus x minus x to the 8th over 8 plus x to the 15th over 15 minus x to the 22 over 22 and so on so in this case this thing converges for minus x to the seventh being less than one so that's the same thing as x not absolute value of x being less than one seventh root of one is just one Let's use part a to approximate the, inter the definite integral from 0 to 0.5. So we'll write that the integral from 0 to 0.5 of 1 over 1 plus x to the seventh dx is equal to our antiderivative x minus x to the eighth over 8 plus x to the 15th over 15 minus x to the 22 over 22 
and so on. Notice that I have not written my plus c because by the fundamental theorem of calculus, when we have definite integrals, we don't need it. It'll just cancel anyway. So we could just take an antiderivative where c is equal to zero, whatever, it doesn't matter. So we end up evaluating at half and zero. Notice at zero there's no contribution, so we just plug in half. So we get half for x minus one over eight times two to the eighth plus one over 15 times 2 to the 15 minus 1 over 22 times 2 to the 22 and so on until we get to a general term of minus 1 to the n over 7n plus 1 times 2 to the 7n plus 1 and so on because even after the general term, you have to keep going. This is an infinite series. So we want this approximated within 10 to the minus 7. Well, very conveniently, notice this is an alternating series. So let's use our alternating series estimation theorem. So we know that for, assuming it satisfies the assumptions for alternating series test, which it does, we can say that the remainder is always less than the term that is first neglected, the term you stop at the term after the term you stop at. So the remainder after three terms would have to be less than or equal to b4, the term we stop at, the term after the term we stop at for three, which is one over 29 times two to the 29th. I didn't write it, but it should be obvious what it would be. So that's about 6.4 times 10 to the 11th, minus 11th, which is definitely within 10 to the minus 7. So we just have to stop after three terms. So we get that the integral from 0 to 0.5 of 1 over 1 plus x to the 7th dx is approximately half minus 1 over 8 times 2 to the 8th plus 1 over 15 times 2 to the 15th minus 1 over 22 times 2 to the 22, which is about 0.4995131374 accurate within 10 to the minus 7th. And it's kind of cool that we only needed four terms or stopping at n equals three to get such a high level of accuracy.